There's no such thing as an overnight success. It's season after season after year building upon one another. Every time I'm out there on the trail or on the road, could be 15 minutes, could be three hours, like I'm stacking towards a big goal down the trail. And all of that cumulative gain eventually pays off. If you want a life hack, consistency. Stop, stop it, stop. <laughs> no, no. Oh, you're a happy camper, aren't you? Hey, we need to claw you. Look at these nice black shorts with your fur. How good are these these uh, microphones? I think you picked that up. <laughs> I was never like that all-star in high school or college, but I was too stubborn to quit. Tim is solid. Gin. Tim is fast, Tim is talented, but Tim's also a really hard worker. Better than any American ever has at some of the most prestigious races in the world. At the top of the podium in lots of different, very difficult races, the best of the best in the entire world. And not just now, but the best that the world has ever seen. This season is geared towards UTMB. Gonna return there for the eighth time. It's a tough race because 50% of the top 10 runners, five of them will not finish the race. Because it's a really difficult mental race. We have a bit of a storied history now. Like any good relationship, it's uh, had its ups and downs, major struggles, but uh, we keep coming back for one another, or at least I keep coming back. I don't know if she wants me to come, but there's still no American man that has ever won the race. His whole season is focused on UTMB podium or win. But before that, he will run Transvulcania. Transvulcania is one of the classic races on the circuit. It runs across the island of La Palma. They always have like a few really competitive runners. You start on the ocean front, you go up and over the top of the volcano, and then you bomb back down to the ocean again. It's a barn burner, especially the, the final descent. You, you drop about 8,000 feet over 10 miles or so. I'm gonna start really hard and just go really hard. And then as I get to the top of this hill, I'll go again harder downhill, and then hopefully even harder on the next uphill. And then this really hard all the way down and then I'm gonna walk it in. Build up such a lead that I don't have to work at the end. Kiss babies and take flowers. Walk the final three miles. I think it's a foolproof plan. I've always liked the feeling of just moving through space quickly. Gliding over terrain, feeling like you're hugging the corners and hammering little descents. And there's something, yeah, I think intoxicating about that. It's completely changed my life. It's allowed me to travel the world, be introduced to cultures and meet people. Martini! I've learned a lot about myself and what I'm capable of, that I can do hard things. It's one of the few times I feel like in my life, my brain can go quiet. It's kind of an opportunity to basically just escape my own thoughts when I'm out there on the trail. My thoughts of doubt or insecurity or sense of being inadequate compared to the other runners will start to trigger these thoughts that I don't belong, that I am not ready, that I am not really a runner, and that I, that I don't deserve to be there. And like tapering for a race, like I'll go out and I'll run more because I'm fearful that I didn't do enough or I will try and restrict my calories the week of a race thinking I need to lose weight or I will in turn binge because I think like I can't deal with what's in my head so I overeat and I have GI distress. So it comes in a lot of different forms but it basically ends up being a unhealthy way of trying to deal with what's in my head. UTMB in 2017 was like that. By the time we were on the podium again, all of those fears, insecurities, and demons had flooded back in. 
and I was suffocating in my own thoughts again, and I just wanted to be gone. It sucked that I wasn't like truly able to like cherish that because I may never get that back, honestly. The haters are gonna say that he's on a downward trend. And if you've accomplished a lot of things and there's been this meteoric rise and you've been consistent up there and you have a couple of bad performances that somehow everything is gonna change. And that, that trend could trend down or it could just be a blip and then it, can, it could continue to trend up. You don't want to just give up. You need to keep moving forward. I shouldn't have doubt if I reflect on what I accomplished. He's still got a lot of fight left in him, and it's completely illogical and impractical to think that's going to be able to be maintained without any changes or deviations throughout. I like this mantra, stop measuring, start living and now I'm letting that go and just trying to live in the moment. And I think that's allowed me to enjoy running again. Yeah. And the most important part for me will be just working on the mental side. The main goal is always win or podium or at least give it to all. But for guys like Tolepson, they try to win all the time. They don't know how to race without thinking that. You've been training for a few months for this race. You just want to start. When it hurts, push. My lungs are screaming, push. My legs are burning, push. I want to quit, push. Because you will lose the race if you stop. Feeling good? I feel good. Uh, yeah. The most difficult part is this Caldera de Tagurientes. If it's a hot day, yeah, they will suffer a lot because it's like a pot. So it's like the heat is definitely there. Yeah, I think it's like a pot. So the heat is just in the middle and you have to cross all of this. You just keep going and uh, let gravity do its thing. But you can be like really good until there and then if you don't feel good before the last downhill, you will suffer a lot. Your body is always gonna tell your brain, we can't do this. And the brain has to override the body and say, keep taking a step. And the worst times I've thought, I don't wanna do this, I'm pretty tired. And if you just roll your ankle, you're forced to drop out. And oh, that's a really bad place to be also. I don't wanna just self-inflict some harm, but those thoughts go through my head. And I think it's all about just acknowledging the thought and letting it go, and then focusing on what's right there in the present, and typically that's, what are you gonna do next? Because they are tired. It's easily really easy to get injured. If they are like more than 10, 15 minutes late, probably something happened. First part is runnable, but with big rocks. So you have to step like small jumps and long jumps because the terrain is really uh, unstable. And then you suddenly, you can run just single track. Then it changes again. The race is started there. If it's not going well, I stumble on everything and I feel like a baby deer. If you're tired, um, I think that's the big thing. You just won't function. It's always hard, honestly. Like, it doesn't matter if it's your first year or you've been doing this for 50 years. I just think running's hard. I have not had a single race ever that I didn't think about quitting during it. And for a while, I thought that made me, like, broken. I'm like, oh, I'm not competitive enough. And I think the reality is everyone has those thoughts. And it's just, you have to learn how to quiet those voices and not give into it. Often it really is just a sense of pride that I did that because at some moment during the race, I thought it wasn't possible.
and to overcome that and actually come out on the other side. And I think it just reminds you that you're capable of hard things if you put yourself out there, take a chance, uh, give yourself the opportunity to see what's possible, risk failure. I think for a long time at UTMB, I felt the need to prove myself to the world and UTMB was the grounds to do such a thing. And I've tasted some pretty sweet moments out there and then four years of pretty sour and I'm returning with a much healthier mindset of, I actually do believe that I don't have to win that race. Like I want to, but I don't need to. And for me personally, that's a better psychological spot to be because I feel like to tap my true potential and that's going to come from a source of gratitude and excitement and curiosity versus maybe some anger or insecurity or fear.